So the subject is Japan, 2020 Olympics. And we have three Olympian hopefuls here with us. Vince Hancock on the far side here. Um, Caitlin Connor in the middle. And we're going to get to you in a minute. We're going to cover you too. <laughs> you guys shoot skeet. Yes, sir. Which I love shotgun. I've never been able to hit those darn things. I, don't, <laughs> I do not understand that game at all. It's too quick. So how long have you been shooting? I've been shooting almost 20 years now. 20 years? Yes, sir. And I've been uh, the last three Olympic Games. And hopefully this will be my fourth. So you're going to your fourth for, yes, for in uh, Tokyo. And how long have you been shooting? Uh, I've been shooting since 2006. Um, let's see, I've been on the national team since 2008. Um, just got back from the World Championships. Uh, took the World Championship gold there, trying to make the 2020 Olympic team also. So, and I've, I've said this to, to every Olympian hopeful that I've interviewed, I think everyone, and that is the baseline of being an Olympian shooter is skill. Everybody that wants to go to the Olympics has to be good, right? That's, okay. but, but that's where you start. That's not where you end, that's where you start. One of the hardest things about what you do is mental, is it not? Absolutely. I would definitely say that the um, shotgun, any type of shooting really, is about 90% middle, maybe a little more. Sure. Uh, golfers know this because they're having a good day, everything works, and then something goes wrong, and, and it's, it, that's it. It's over. It's just over. How do you deal with that? How do you train? It's one thing to train the mechanics. The other thing is to actually prepare yourself to go into a competition where everybody is good. Sure. And everybody's different. Each person has their own set of fundamentals that they go back to, whether that be mental or physical. Now, for me, the, the mental side of things, I've tried to push that off and not, not think internally about I'm thinking too much or I need to think this or I need to think that. It's more about how can I be perfect in every one of my moves to make sure that I have the, the best outcome possible. So with that, it allows me to not think about thinking about it and it allows me to just focus on doing the perfect move every single time. And that allows the human brain to focus on that one thing, which is really all us guys are capable of doing. She can think <laughs> about more things than one time, but we can. For sure. <laughs> one track mind allows us to keep that one track focused where we need to go. Sure, sure. There has to be something inside each of the three of you, a compulsion, because this isn't something that you do Oh, I think I'll go out Saturday and practice. This people go to parties on Friday night. You're out shooting. You know, <laughs> people go to their prom. You're out shooting. I mean, this has to be something that you say early in your life. This is what I'm going to do. And more than anybody in your peer group, you sticking to one thing. That's got to be tough, is it not? It's definitely tough. You know, like you definitely make a lot of sacrifices. You have to really pick and choose really what you want to focus on and for me it definitely is shooting like I focus fully on shooting about 90 percent of the time too so a lot of sacrifices comes with it but that's the ultimate goal so it has to stink for a social life <laughs> for <laughs> it sure does. Definitely. it does definitely does and yeah. I know for me I, st I knew that I wanted to go to the Olympics when I was 12. The, the, the Olympic flame ran through my hometown and lead up to 96 Olympics in Atlanta and that was my first experience with the Olympics Fast forward a couple of years, in 1999 or early 2000, I found out that shooting is an Olympic sport. I didn't even know that. And we went up to Atlanta, shot my first few rounds, and I told my parents that on day two that I wanted to go to the Olympics and I wanted to win a gold medal. Yeah. And I was 12 years old at the time. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, a, it's something that we start from a very young age, and it takes a lot of dedication, sure. and not a whole lot of social status. So <laughs> you true. take all of that, Marco, and, and you put the issues that you've had in your life. So Marco De La Rosa, you were, I was going to say you were, but you're always a Marine, right? Uh, There's no such thing as an ex-Marine. No such thing. <laughs> but you're a, uh, you were a Marine and you still are. I don't know how you even say that. I was an Army guy. I'm an ex-Army guy. But you, <laughs> you were in Somalia. And you made it through a whole tour in the Marine Corps, everything went fine, and then what happened? I got back to uh, Somalia in November 15th of 93, uh, walked into a robbery, and uh, you know, every time I talk about it, I start looking because we relive it all the time. Oh, I understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I walked into the robbery, saw the young lady being robbed. Uh, I acted, just reacted. I mean, you know, his instinct took over. It wasn't like I wanted to be a hero today. I didn't see his buddy, and his buddy shot me in the back. 
and it paralyzed me from a T5, so from here down, I'm paralyzed. Yeah, so. It's the same reason you became a Marine. There, and you can't explain that to people. You either get it or you don't get it. But people go, why would you do that? Why would you do I joined the Army and volunteered to go to Vietnam. People go, why would you do that? There's nothing I can tell you. Isn't that true? Yeah. There's nothing you can say. No. Why would you do that? Why would you do that to help somebody? Because it's who you are. Mm. Now, you take that, which makes it hard enough. That's hard enough. Mm. Now you're adding a layer, and you're out there plugging away every day, right? Yeah. How much do you practice? Uh, two to three hours a day. And sometimes, like, in front of the TV, I'll have my pistol. And just to memorize just the trigger. Just watch TV and just keep on squeezing that trigger. So every time when I do shoot, I know when, when it's going to go off. Exactly. You know exactly when it's going to go off. You're doing both air pistol and 22. And 22. Sure, yeah. yeah. And now you're going to be going to uh, Dubai coming up, right? Yes. For the World Cup? It's a World Cup. So that's when? That's February 13th to the 19th. And uh, to get a quota. I mean, to, to get to the Tokyo, you need two minimum qualification scores, where I already have. And you get a quota, which is pretty much you get on the podium, you get a medal and stuff. And you, get, you, you reserve a spot for the, for the country, not for yourself, to go to uh, Tokyo. So you're in pretty good position to do that right now. Yeah, right? yeah. Yeah, you are. Yeah, look at yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Marine, right? Yeah, yeah you bet. Yeah, you can take it by storm. So, um, and then after that, of course, is, is 2020 in the Olympics. Um, to you, I, maybe there is no difference. I, I don't know. You have, you have issues that you have to deal with, but it probably really isn't different than they are because it's a mental game. And she you've just got said to do it. that. She's just said it. It's like it's 90% metal. There are some days where in practice I do phenomenal. I mean, I freak out like, wow, I did a real good score. But then I go to a competition and it just puts so much pressure on myself that sure. my scores are not there. So it's, it's a lot of mental. And I start thinking, well, what did I do wrong? Like I go back to my, yeah. my, my profile and everything. Like, okay, yeah, that's right. what I did and stuff. So it's, it's, it's absolutely right. It's all mental. What so, was your okay. job in the Marine Corps? Uh, NBC. What? NBC, uh, nuclear oh, biological yeah, chemical. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's a scary job. Uh, I would think that the, that Marine training would help would help this because it makes you focus. The military actually did, does help me out a lot because it's, again, it's like when they taught us about the the, the ARs, repetition, repetition, repetition. Exactly. It's like yeah. it becomes second nature. So it's like uh, yeah, it's, uh, the military. I, I love the Marine Corps. I love what they taught me. Whatever they instilled in me, I use it in here. I, I've been shooting three and a half years. Wow. And this is where I'm at. Is that right? Yeah, and I will wow. to them. That's interesting. And it's interesting particularly because Marines aren't pistol people. They're <laughs> riflemen. Yeah. So you, it's, that's really kind of, I mean, there's certain basics that apply, but that's certainly kind of a divergence from what training you would have had. So you're really like starting from the beginning. Yeah. Yes, I, I took pistol because it's really, it's hard. It's hard. Like the rifle is nice. Like I shot a sure. rifle and stuff. And sure, I, sure. For sure I could shoot rifle, but... I mean, pistol is very challenging. I, I like it. It motivates me. It pushes me. That's great. Uh, so three of you are going to take gold in Tokyo. Yes. That's the plan. Uh, yes, sir. Three of you are going to take gold or not. Come on. <laughs> yes, yes, sir. Yeah, you bet you are. Three gold Olympians 2020. You watch out for them. And for SHOT Show TV, I'm David Lombardo.